Hey, welcome back to AP Physics 1. We're going to be doing Lab 11, which is to find the spring constant K. And we're going to look at the spring constant of this uh, spring right here. There's going to be three different methods to do it. For the first method, we're going to use the net force and find the spring constant using the relationship between force versus however much it's elongated by. Uh, for the second part, we're going to be doing uh, oscillation. So we're going to find how many times this oscillates and then using the period of a spring mass oscillator, you should be able to find what the spring constant will be. And then the last uh, way we're going to do it is we're going to plot it on a uh, graph and then you're going to take the peaks between, you're going to look at the points between two different peaks and that should hopefully give you the period. And then from that period, you should be able to solve for the spring constant that way as well. Okay, so what we've done is we've put a spring on the system here. It worked out nicely that this table was about a meter long. So what we're going to do is write down what our initial displacement is going to be. So I would say that the center here is where you want to call your initial displacement. So that way, every time we stretch it, you can look at the center point and see where that displacement is going to be relative to the ruler here. All right. Um, so go ahead and take a second to record the uh, value for the displacement when it's unstretched. Okay, so after placing the first mass here, our string or spring has been uh, elongated or stretched to this value right here. So I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can compare it to where it is on the scale. So find the center of the ring. Ooh, I gotta slow it down a little bit, it's oscillating. Okay, see where that center is, and then compare it to where the distance uh, relative to the initial unstretched position is going to be. Now we're going to add a second mass to it. Okay, so now we're looking at 101 grams being pulled down, and we have elongated the spring some more. So look at the center circle, see where the new stretching position is, and compare it to the initial position when the spring had no mass on there. All right, and so now the last mass is the 20 gram mass, and uh, here's the new stretch position. I'll try to bring it closer so you can see what it's gonna look like. And from the center of the soup right here, see where that new distance is, and compare it to the initial distance when it was unstretched. So with all of this information, you should be able to plot a force versus uh, the amount that the spring has been stretched by, and using the slope of that, that should help you determine K. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next part. Okay, for the second part of this project, we're gonna be looking at different masses and how they affect the oscillation uh, or the period of the pendulum. So I'll let it oscillate a few times. You can um, then figure out how to find the period of the pendulum. And once you have the period of the pendulum, uh, go ahead and solve for the spring constant. So this is the first mass that we're using, and this mass is 20 grams. Okay, go. One. So that's that, and we're gonna move on to the next mass. Okay, so for the second mass that we're going to oscillate, it's going to be the 20 gram plus the 52 gram. So add them together, that'll tell you what the mass of the second uh, trial is going to be. And I'm going to let it oscillate right now. Okay, and we'll move on to the third mass. All right, so here's the third mass. We have the 101 grams plus the 20 grams right there. So the total mass is whatever that value is when you add it together. And I'm going to let it oscillate, and then you can start whenever you want.
and I will stop it here. So with those three values, you can make a slope, uh, you can make a graph, and then use the slope to determine or help you determine what the spring constant is going to be. So we'll move on to the last part. All right, so for the last part, we're going to be connecting it to a motion sensor. I've just done a practice run, so it does work. Um, it's connected to the motion sensor down here, and then it should be going back and forth. So there's a Mrs. helping me out. Um, so she's going to push it down, and I'll hit the record button, and we'll hopefully get uh, some recordings going. So let me reset the value. Uh, here we go. What are we doing? Okay, and then we're going to clear this, clear the last run, delete last run, and we'll take some measurements here. So position versus position here. Okay, great. So when she's ready, she'll let it swing, and then we'll get some measurements. So let's do that right now. Go ahead. I'll hit the start. So you can see some of the damped oscillations going on but I would take the values somewhere between here and here in that region and I'll make a photo of it and I'll put it on the lab so you have that as well. Um, the last thing I should tell you is that the mass of this is going to be 101 grams. So just keep that in mind, okay? So that's the last part of the project. You have enough information to solve for K using this graph here. All right.